Yep. Okay. Doug O'Malley, I'm the director with Environment New Jersey. And the reason we're here today is really quite simple. You know, there's been a battle brewing in the pines for months. And a lot of people thought that battle was over in January when the Pineless Commission deadlocked on whether to build a massive new gas pipeline right through the heart of the Pinelands to repower a, a retiring coal plant. And quite frankly, you know, this is the other shoe that's dropping because Governor Christie was lobbying furiously to get this pipeline approved, even though four former governors, both Democrats and Republicans, said this was a bad idea. He lobbied furiously and the governor lost. And the governor is, you know, quite, quite honestly, is participating in a political payback. He's firing the people who voted against him, even his own appointee, Darcy Green, from the shore. And he's putting in people that are going to support the pipeline and support his view. So, you know, this is a blatant attempt to, you know, stack an independent commission. And that's part of the reason why, you know, we're here today and why we're asking the Judiciary Committee both Republicans and Democrats, to vote against these nominees. Because if the governor can stack appointees based upon you know, his, his whim on their votes on a, a contentious issue, you know, why even have an independent commission? You know, the, the, the whole concept of independence will be shattered. And not just on this particular issue with the pipeline and not just the Pinelands Commission, but with all of our independent commissions across the state. The assumption is that Appointees are nominated and then they'll take into account public comment and they won't be unduly influenced by politics. You know, if these appointees get forward and go get approved by the state senate, it'll be very obvious that suddenly there's no more independent commissioners or commissions. It's just a rubber stamp process. And whatever a governor says, you know, that's the way it will go. And clearly in this case, it's so egregious. The Pinelands being just as beautiful million acre location in South Jersey that provides us with 17 trillion gallons of fresh water, of fresh aquifer. It's one of the largest untouched wild areas left on the East Coast from Maine to between Maine and Florida. And if the fact that you'd have a massive gas pipeline go right through its heart speaks to, you know, a terrible precedent that would be set. And obviously, if the commission is stacked, you know, this would only be the beginning. We'd see more development, we'd see more pipelines that would get approved in future years and decades. And really, that just will turn the, the pinelands into what we like to call the, the pipelines. Because it's really easy to put pipelines all across, you know, natural area if you have commissioners that are willing to rubber stamp it. And the fracking boom is showing no signs of ending. And that's why it's so critical that you know, all of us are here today because literally hundreds of people came out again and again and again late into the night, late into Friday afternoons and Wednesday afternoons to say, no, the Pinelands Commission should block this pipeline. And the commission listened to the public and to the facts on the ground. And now the governor is trying to come back and relitigate this battle by stacking the commission with his cronies. It smells wrong and it is wrong. And we urge the Judiciary Committee to say no to these nominees today. Okay. I'm going to have you pause between the questions because sometimes I like screw up sure, on the fine. thing. And by ha having you pause with a little bit of silence, I could like edit it a little bit sure. just, just in case. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the first question. Sure. What is, um, it, I'm just throwing these off the top yeah. of the head. What is the evidence that these are political appointees specifically appointed to pass the pipeline rather than to represent the Pine Lance Commission's that's, that's a charter? Great, that is actually a great question because, you know, the governor and uh, the nominee supporters are saying, look, you know, they're, they're going to be an independent voice. Well, just looking at the resumes, it's hard to be an independent voice when you worked and were the district director for one of the biggest supporters of the pipeline. And, and Bob Barr, who's uh, you know, a, 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 you know, an official with the Ocean City Democratic Club, and a former, a, you know, and a, and a former staffer with uh, Senator Van Drew. Uh, you know, that's that's a clear conflict of interest. Senator Van Drew is one of the strongest supporters for the pipeline. It's hard to imagine you going against your former boss on the commission. And then Dennis Rohr is the, you know, the mayor of a small town in Burlington County. Uh, you know, he's. A Republican mayor, uh, you know, you have to imagine that he's going to be inclined to listen to the governor, uh, you know, when the governor's office, uh, you know, weighs in. So that's that's why the you know there's a clear concern, there's a clear quid pro quo of you know we'll put you up 
for the Pinelands Commission if you go our way. And that's what we're here to say no to. Okay. Next, uh, okay. Next question is, will be, um, what kind of infrastructure development might follow this and why would this passage of this pipeline be the catalyst for sure, additional the, development? Sure, the reason why this is the, you know, the straw that could break the camel's back is because developers for decades have said, look, the, pi the Pinelands is too, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not only too complicated of a plan, but it's too onerous. You know, why can't we get an exemption? You know, this comprehensive management plan, it's outdated. And you have developers and you certainly have, uh, you know, pipeline companies saying, we'd love to build through the Pinelands too. The whole reason the Pinelands was created is because gas companies wanted to have infrastructure for offshore drilling to go through the Pinelands. That's why it was created close to 40 years ago. And we imagine that to be a, a similar effort once this gas pipeline got approved to have future gas pipelines get approved. It's cheap to go through the Pinelands and that's why South Jersey Gas is targeting. It's a lot easier to go through a preserved area than it is to use eminent domain for private property. So, you know, this really would be, you know, an open season on development, not just for pipelines, but for all sorts of development in the, in the Pinelands. Okay. Is there justification, how, cover the justification for the development of the pipeline. Is it sure. a true, you know? So the, the argument that the pipeline supporters are using is that, you know, without this pipeline, you know, South Jersey is, is not gonna be able to keep the lights on. That's a fallacious argument uh, for, you know, a, a number of, of reasons. But perhaps, uh, you know, the biggest one is that the largest source of power in South Jersey is actually the nuclear facilities in Salem County. It's actually one of the largest sources of power in the state. And quite frankly, there, especially in wintertime, there aren't a ton of people who live in Cape May and Atlantic County. The reason why there's a push to build this pipeline is because they want to turn BL Ingen, a retiring coal plant, into a full cycle gas plant that's going to put out more pollution and is going to run all the time. And there's a, a legitimate concern that this isn't just about keeping, you know, power in South Jersey, it's about exporting natural gas to foreign markets. It's where the money is to be made and gas companies are pushing heavily to not, not to import gas from other, other countries anymore, but to export it. And that's part of the reason why they're pushing this pipeline is they, they see money, not just repowering an old power plant, but by exporting natural gas to foreign markets. Okay, I'm going to just hit you with like three rapid fire questions. Sure. We should have pretty quick answers to yeah. them. One is that, do you know the diameter of the pipeline? I believe it's a 36 inch pipeline, which uh, might not sound like a lot, but that's actually a lot of gas. And the maximum operating pressure? Any idea? I don't know the maximum operating pressure. Okay. Um, is, um, is, was there, is this application, is there any reason this couldn't be used as bi-directional? Or could this, you said, you said that yeah. they want to drill off the coast. If they're drilling off the coast, wouldn't this be the logical? Yeah, I mean, there's, th that actually is a, a good point in the sense of there's an aggressive attempt, sadly, by the Obama administration to uh, use seismic testing to see how much oil and gas there are, uh, right. not only off the Jersey Shore, but off of the whole Atlantic coast. I believe it's methyl hydrates that Rutgers is doing analysis for. Correct. And it doesn't just have to be New Jersey, it could be Delaware, it could be Maryland. We're only 90 miles from potential offshore drilling in Virginia. Now, uh, you know, most of the, the assumption is that, you know, there would be oil offshore, but there certainly could be gas. And quite frankly, if they're allowed to build this pipeline, it makes it easier to get approvals to build future pipelines, either for oil or gas. So this is, uh, and, and also quite frankly, you know, we're huge supporters of offshore wind. That's, uh, that has a lot of potential to power all of New Jersey and especially South Jersey. But we don't want to see, you know, a, a transmission line for offshore wind go right through the Pinelands as well. We need to respect the Pinelands. And the second you open it up and say, you know, one pipeline is good, it's a lot harder to say no to others. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. Super.